Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the MOOC Interactomics course. In our previous lecture, we discussed the Acuity software interface and became familiar to the control parameters as well as data analysis options. In today's lecture, we will talk about data analysis and delve more into the details of all the theoretical aspects and the constraints that we have discussed over the last few lectures. It gives me immense pleasure to invite Mr. Pankaj from Spinko Biotech again, who will now talk to us about data analysis interface on Acuity software. So, Pankaj in the last uh, lecture when we talked about uh, GenePix Pro, um, then you showed one e-slide how to scan that e-slide uh, by using the GenePix Pro software. Uh, I guess now it will be good if you can use the same slide what we scanned in the last lecture and uh, see how we can analyze that here. So this slide actually was used for looking at the glucose response in the various time point from 0 to 20.5 hours in East and I think it will be interesting to see what type of trends we observe in various time point with the glucose utilization here. Okay. Sure. So please use that slide and sure. we can look the demo here. Let us walk through the data. So as we describe, so we see a first import data tags. So basically this allows one to take the data from the microarray database and store in the form of GPR file and allow that to be understood by the uh, Acuity software. We also have opportunity in the form of text file import where you will define what is available for what. So in this fashion, I here I have defined in the microarrays the folder where it says about the training and it says what all different slides are available to us to design. So here we see seven different kind of time points collected and these are individual slides which one has run with both Sci3 and Sci-Fi. So this is ratio based image which we are going to see in and we have also got an e another file which is come from the text to show you even that can also be imported. So first you have to individually scan each of the images, make one folder where you group all of this and then use that whole data set for the combined analysis. Right. So you can have all the GPR files stored or one by one right. from the GenePix Pro and just import the data in the form of import micro data file. So it, it just goes on looking for the GPR file okay. and this now can be imported and ready for your analysis. Okay. So once the data is in, this will be displayed in the down in the form of folder which you have kept in for the analysis. Yep. So here the folders are as we discussed that this can be used for a data warehouse as such. So this little pit kind of uh, image here tells you that there is some files are attached. Okay. You can view them, you can see them that what all somebody has attached. So if I see view all attachments, I will be able to see one has attached to it the important files coming from the GPS in the form. So also a GAL file and the image. So it gave me a complete opportunity to look at. It is good to emphasize here if you have a GIF file, this particular one can also behave a partial visualization tool as in case of GenePix okay. in case you want to look how the spot has behaved. So in this fashion, it it can be it any any file can be attached to it. And since you have the gal file, you also know the gene array list. So at any time point, if you identify any spot which is looking uh, interesting, you know what that gene is True. by uh, aligning with the gal map. Correct. And another, this is a good point you raised because very important next step is a substance annotation. The substance here, I mean, is a each spot which could be the feature which is again could be a RNA or a gene or a protein. Okay. So that is why we call it as a substrate annotation. Very few people extensively trace them. So here I'll show you in the form of 
tab data in the annotation one can look at what all different information can be seen for each tab wise so you have the same annotation tab being given for the substance id and then because it is each database of candida is being attached here component different functions even at the level of enzyme commission numbers so there are different annotations which people try to get in which also you can import in the form of text delimited rename to dot sdt file which allows one to take all the annotation information possible so another very important thing the parameter file so as you have said already that it is very very important for one scientist to look all the parameters and group accordingly right. this can be make again in the text delimited form and can be renamed to dot mdt file and this again can be imported to look at all the parameters are visible in the form in the down window here to look at Right. In in few seconds more, you will understand what each window means. But as it is this case, you can just switch over to different types, and you can just go to a, a, a parameter file and look at what all details. So I maybe have you can just uh, briefly explain each of the tabs so sure. that uh, students are clear about uh, what is the they can infer from each of these windows. Sure. So here in the working area which we have defined, it is again split it into two. so which allows one one on the top to the level of different data visualization methods so what all different features are there and what all different array say for example i only open one array it shows me only one array and it tells me what i am looking at i am right. looking at log ratio data yeah. in a similar fashion i can look at any other one because it is a gpr import whatever so the data you have all the data you have to watch for Right. you can look at the background signal individual intensities but majorly used is the log ratios for specially expression analysis right. but if you use protein or single wavelength based you can look at only one wavelength based one so you can always control what you are watching apart from this the other tab include the annotation which gives you that what all different one is tracing at the level of annotation names in the form of different uh, databases information on the genes or how the protein is behaving or even the localization so where it is being localized right. all that can be traced and the other one to that it also gives little bit of other details in the form of statistics warehouses and few of the auto scripting capability which advanced users sometimes want to use but this one particular statistic one allow you to see what all you want to see which we see in detail in bottom what you essentially see is how the data is looked at many a times what happens let's say quickly for example i want to go to one data and i would like to see how the first base is looking at okay. so what i am going to do is look at each particular spot and look at the profile of it so because it is only one it is showing you one dot point right if i in keep on including my more and more arrays the data bot start increasing and immediately one feature profiling how it has performed can immediately seen right can we and select now a couple of arrays right. and just align so the way to select here is just hold the shift button and if you want to select only one one more or if you select all to the last all can get selected sure then right click and click on open selected what it does is it allow you to open all the images here right so it's given you all the whatever calculated one you want to display and if you click on that each profile now can be seen here with refresh button if you keep it will be able to see all so in the down if i just click on the profile button based on what i have selected i can look at the different profiles how it has behaved so in this fashion immediately i know my parameter file that each one is what is it and i see that okay this is all normal average in one of the case it went up so similarly different features can be individually analyzed and then checked at how the behavior is so you can actually look at the trend for the same gene uh, during the whole time course analysis correct, correct. so you can also trace little bit of working on the data before going into this right. let me explain an important factor here what does each images mean sure actually if you carefully look may not be very clear that this is little purplish in color and the other down ones are little reddish in color right 
Yeah. The purple one means that the data is not normalized. Okay. The red color means that the data is normalized. And little dot green color what you are seeing tells me that I have a JPEG image which I can see down here. So it allows me a connectivity of what is happening just by visualization. If you want say that the data is not normalized, it's an easy process of doing it. So you once imported the data, on that you can just click right click and look at a normalization wizard. This normalization wizard allow one to choose different kind of normalization process which we have discussed earlier that it could be a ratio based or lowest normalization based. It is continuous and it is discontinuous type. So one can select but one has to remember the way one has been normalized all my time point has to be normalized in the same way. way. Yeah. So you cannot cross difference in the form of uh, different normalizations and compare them. So it, you are looking at a little bit of a different balance. Yeah, because until unless you are normalized in the same scheme, you cannot compare those across, right? Because you are going to compare different time points here. Correct. So uh, as other ones are being analyzed in the form of ratio base, I am going to select the one. You have an opportunity to select different types. I am going to select ratio of medians, which is the most preferred. And if you see again, just the next button with all the flagging which is said, if they are flagged, please don't allow for the calculations. Okay. So right, and then you just click next. It allows that, okay, it is available for me. It's being done and I can say finish which allows that fine I have finished my normalization. So if you carefully look back the spot there the purplish will change to red so which allows one to understand that yes all my images are now being uh, kind of normalized in a similar fashion. So I guess we are dealing here with a lot of data set so it takes some True. time for processing the whole thing. So it describes how many flags were there. So 6,400 at a time were analyzed and it showed, see, after doing the normalization and before normalization, how the data looks like and after normalization, how the data is looking like. So you can uh, look at a different way. So what we have done is we have corrected at the level of background right. and I'm trying to display across how this and X, Y is being scattered together before and after normalization. Once you are satisfied with this, now if I look back, now this has changed to uh, same color of reddish to from the purple, right. which tells me, okay, this is also all normalized. Back. Right. So you can also look at the, if, say if I want to reconfirm, which way I have done the normalization, I can always go back and look at normalization viewer, which allows one to say it is ratio based. Okay. And it, you can look back what kind of this one is being done for using the normalization process. So I can cross check once again, how right. one is going about. So once you have all the data being normalized after the import, and you have all the places in the form of annotation and the parameter file ready for you, there are a few ways which, with which you can look at the data. The so I think before moving forward, it's important to ensure that normalization was done properly and one need to look at each slide carefully each slide. Yes, so as we discussed earlier, it's very essential to have same normalization process done for all. Yeah. And it is not a thumb rule that which one is more preferable. One can choose anything, but make sure all your different slides are being handled in a similar way. Okay. And you can do different ways get the data and do analysis in the different normalization processes also. Right. So one has an opportunity to even correct back. So because you have raised a point, say for example, I want to remove this normalization and put some other normalization. Okay. I can just click here, remove normalization. It removes normalization, right. it allows go back to the raw data. And again, allow can re-normalize. Re-normalize in a different sense. Maybe you want to do now lowest normalization sure. and check back all in that format. Okay. And you can also select multiple in the similar way in, the, in a one shot itself, we can do normalization in a single one. So this is what I prefer. So usually you don't mess around with different kind of normalization. Right. Either yeah. select all or remove all because I have imported one to show you how the process is being done here. Okay. And then immediately one would like to see how my data looks like. Yeah. The one way to look is the numbers, which is little cumbersome. Other way people like is color. If you carefully observe the coloring scheme is going here, right. red, black, and green. Yeah, maybe you can tell that it's a conventional themes for the micro, right? People always represent these colors. So what each of these color code means? Correct. So the black color is towards one. The meaning is when I am looking at the data, 
you expect that when green and red channel both are giving same color same intensities it becomes blackish in color if they are up regulated people put them towards the red color and if it is down regulated minus sign will be given and that will become down regulated the idea with this is which laser is being used what so in context we have shown you are using which kind of ratio means to check so usually it is case over control what people report for yeah right so in this fashion conventionally you can see the colors but here there are many ones there are many which we have opened now six right. so i want to see in nutshell what is happening acuity allows you to do it by seeing you can do an auto fit color so quickly the numbers have gone only colors are shown to tell you how each particular substance or gene has behaved across your samples you can look this is being attached i have just split table so that i can look back at the annotation also so i can have just split table available put an annotation file here so that i keep looking at what i am interested in okay so there is a enough opportunity for you to play around so how you want to look and customize your view so i think these type of heat maps right away gives you a feel about what type of genes across each time point has shown the variation or modulation in the expression profile uh, looking at the color itself like for the first one uh, i can just easily say okay it is going down as we are moving across to, towards the 20th hour true uh, and so i think by looking at this type of data one can visually actually get the feel about the expression changes across the different time point very true so this gives you a immediate visualization tool to understand what is happening and get a rough idea and this is mind you just the neat raw data we right. have not performed just the normalization yeah. and we are just seeing how they are behaving so it gives you a rough profile okay i have some biology which is going for this particular design of experiment okay. so with here on if i want to go back to numbers or auto fit my data i can select appropriate one auto fit all data so it says it just fitted based on that so it again shows you the number back okay so we have got the data imported now we have done the normalizations we are trying to see how they have behaved very important thing which sometimes people like is in the form of like able to move the data sorting up and down but before doing that acuity tells you that first you make a data set okay the meaning of data set is this is just looking at the raw data and i want to extract the data and allow to keep in a data set here towards the down okay so there you are available with all the different kind of things so now there are two ways of doing things in the data set so one thing is take all the features and sometimes people say i want to have my criteria defined such that my visualization makes more sense to me so maybe one can actually be stringent at this stage itself and say okay i want only very very biologically significant ones so true. define the p values true and then just uh, sort data based on that true so people can do okay which are changes up and down with a range of so and so which is two fold up regulated two fold down regulated right. so usually differential expressions data is being logged the meaning of log to the base 2 is essentially log to the base 2 value 1 is equal to two fold change so you are talking of log to the base 2 means you are talking of four fold change which really become significant you can filter based on different parameters and generate the data sets so essentially you are reducing the numbers so you make more sense in the form of visualizations right. otherwise also you can take all the data and you can do it let's quickly see how we can do that particular job sure so i can select my data again holding the shift i can click and i want it will tell me what you want to do it says you can have different kind of opportunities but you can create data sets from selections so this allows that whatever i have selected do create a data set from that once i click that it says where you want to keep in the folder so beforehand i can generate my own folders i can define my studies right and i can place them say for example i am going to give it a name called training and it creates all the data from that so here you go from the seven micro rays you have got and you have got all the data yes, yeah. now this is the one to get all complete data 
you can also have other ways as you suggested that p-value importance coming or log 14 values coming in you can define a criteria of doing that the way to do that again look at a common task pane we have done the three steps and now after doing normalization i can click on create and open data sets. before actually you move just i think it's a good idea you just refresh again uh, sort of the task stepwise so the sure. first was the import data correct so if you see first was the import data then importing the substance annotation file which is a dot sdt file correct. which gives all the annotations which you have made a tab delimited and name it to dot sdt then the third one is micro parameters where it is being stored in the form of tab delimited name to dot mdt file so which allows one to trace all the details the other three you are seeing is based on the fa matrix which is actually a cell file so their image is actually a dat file which they convert to the intensity level cell file okay. that can also be handled but just it does an rma analysis where they are moved a little bit further for the different kind of analysis but it does give opportunity even to look at fa matrix outcome data and then you have a viewing data so as we have seen you can auto fit the data you can look at the color being coded you can view the data in a different form you can individually look them look at them or look with the numbers and comprise them and see all the arrays how the behavior is happening you can also do look at the profiling at the down based on what you have seen earlier you can look at any of the things click on the profile and you will be able to see how this has behaved across so apart from that next step involves the normalization wizard so i need to make sure that all my chips are being normalized similarly right. or essentially when i import the data i prefer it non normalized and all i select and select one base of normalization i can create same level of experiment with different ways with different normalization per se and do the further analysis down there so once we have finished the normalization method you can look at a query which is creating a data sets so as we described one simple way is write at the data select the chips and then create a data or you can come here and say create a, a data set from the open data set so how to go for this one if i click on create and open data sets right yeah. so you can see similar way it has popped up the window where it shows in the data set the mother folder and okay. then the child of it that what all can be generated now and then i can create a data set here in this form which we can do directly there very other important factor is creating a data set from the query mm -hmm. the meaning is that you can define a different criteria right from the design of the experiment to little bit of more details of statistics to import what i want to import inside say for example quickly here i can define which my experiment i want to do type or based on the parameters as such i can say that okay i want to import the data in the form of only one particular parameter this is little little tricky because if you have same name multiple times right. the data will be imported twice so you need to make sure your folder is right and then you have given only one copy to avoid that okay so i can select a folder and then i can say i am into this particular folder and i want to import all the data from that right so what happens is it selects again in the same shift fashion it creates a query you can add an add query and it can be created in this fashion so once you have done you want to say which parameter you want to select right i can just quickly do this for you that i want to take a ratio based one i'll just take log ratios and i can create a parameter of less than or equal to 0.3 0.33 log ratio change is something like do yeah. add to list and greater than 2 greater than say for example 2 yeah again i can add a query so it if i select both of them i can create an or or and right. if and i create or that. you can apply that any feature which is this or that you select that for my import so i will be able to just add a query on this to the final wizard and then you have the data available for you coming out you can even select the database basis of annotation and the filter only with our mitochondrial specific mm -hmm. so it depends on what questions you are asking so quickly right. look at only that what you are saying so it says how many of them are there in that so it reduced the numbers 
Sure. So in this fashion, I can import a limited number of database as well, right? I can give a name to it like filtered and it will be imported. Okay. So you cannot create files on the root directory. You need right. to create your folder and do the job. So it can do the job in this fashion. So once you are ready with your data set, what you want to do sometime is based on your experiment, it gives you an opportunity what all you can do. Number one, you can sort the columns, meaning F1 to F7, I want to make F7 first. Mm -hmm. I can do the uh, sorting by that. And so also I can do a different ways of combining columns. One, why you need to combine columns. Say for example, I have given three technical replicates for each right. and then no, biological replicates of three. So I can just take an average of them, right. combine the columns, and it will take an average of all of this. And you are ready with the data to go ahead for the analysis part. So many a times, you can also go for a normalized to column. The meaning is I am having a zero to maximum. So I want all my data to get normalized to first column. This feature is used when you are essentially using a time point. So all will be standardized or normalized to one column which you have defined as a zero at one. And a very important one other one is a dry swap. Usually we know that Psi3 and Psi5. Psi3 mm -hmm. is little less in size, Psi5 is little bigger. So there is a variation in the incorporation of that. To take care, usually people do at least one die swap experiment to accommodate the variations happening because of the die. Right. So what you can do is you can apply a die swap. I can quickly show how the die swap works. Die swap just changes the way you look at. Say you have taken a ratio of one by another wavelength, so it just reverses it. So it is just minus x. So minus will become plus, plus will become sure. minus. So it just changes the die swap, which will take care in the form of combining the data and avoiding the variability happening due to the die swap effect. We also talked about die swap and I was talking to them about dice technology and how one need to use, in fact, labeling with different dice and reverse uh, die swapping so that uh, there is no die uh, bias in the analysis. True. So same can be accommodated here at the microarray to look at. That right. was a very nice part actually to go ahead with. And then many a times which you find that the few rows I want to remove, I can remove few rows, I can select few of the columns I can remove, say example some QC has not passed. So I can just remove them, which can allow me to do a different ways. And then once you have done that, you can go and do a clustering, which is a visualization method. Right. So technically, the clustering is divided into two types, hierarchical and non-hierarchical. Hierarchical means that in the starting, you have only one start point, and then all other features are attached to them. Other one is non-hierarchical type, where each group behaves independently of each other. So there are K-means, SOMs, K-medians, and the particularly one, the people use hierarchical when they don't know where to start with. Right. So they start with hierarchical when they don't know how many groups could happen and how many results I'm expecting. Right. And once you do have the results and idea, you can cut down because hierarchical is little RAM consuming. It takes a little bit of more time. Right. Whereas, because you can imagine all has to be linked to one. And there are different ways of doing it, center based, the best like coefficient correlation based or distance metric based and lastly binary based. Okay. So binary based is usually used for only CGS kind of analysis where it is present absent type, mm -hmm. whereas the earlier two ones are extensively used in the microarray data. The Pearson's correlation with centric ones are being used for the median or the mean type variation. So okay. when we quickly do it, we'll be able to see what we can do. Say for example, I want to do on my filtered data, which I have already done, one of the clusterings. Say I have got the filtering, I have got the log ratios. And another important thing is, whichever is something like bluish in color, Hmm. That particular one you have selected to work with. Okay. So this, this is filtered data. Yeah. So this is actually a filtered data and allowed to work with. And when I hit a kind of clustering possibility, it says you need to create a quick data set. Okay. The meaning of that one is you have half the data already in hand. But now what you need to do is look at a third tab which allows one to look in the form which you want to create the data set for which you want to analyze. It's going a little lengthier, right? Yeah. 
So here I have uh, normalized the data and normalized the data to F1. So I can see the script what is happening. So I can just look at the one which I have performed at the level of different processing so that I can look at the data. So here when I look at SOM, which I have done at the level of four into three clusters, SOMS is something like a non-hierarchical type. So they are individually being blocked. So all different genes behave differently and based on the profile, they are made into one group. Okay. So because I have given four into three, I'll be able to see four into three. So four number of columns and three rows. Right. So independently, there's being divided. So one can have any numbers. Right. The idea comes from the hierarchical, but as you see here immediately, the clustering gives an immediate response that, okay, this was very low in these ones. Again, it went down and it, we are able to see it again up. So in different so time you, codes, it's a different expression. Correct. Profile. So based on the behaviors, you can see that, okay, this is being grouped up with. Okay. So there are different ways which people prefer, but usually preferred ones are the Kendall ones for the hierarchical type after the Pearson's correlation. And for the this one after SOMS, people usually use Euclidean squares using some of the non-hierarchical type. So K means and K medians is the better ones to use with. So this actually gives you an opportunity how the data is being visualized. So once you have visualized the data, so what you can do is you can look at a statistics. Right. Statistics in the sense, if you click on any of the ones, which is something like statistical significant test, it tells you I have different options to go ahead with. Different type of test. Different one type of perform. test one can perform, like student t test. And the reason is when it is an equal variance with Gaussian normal bell shaped curve, you prefer this test. When the variance is not equal, you want to go with the second type where there is a small modification of the again student t test, but without uh, normal variance happening. Okay. And they are student t test where you don't know what actually variance means to. And you prefer paid test when the sample is coming from the same origin, especially in the form of cancers, where the when the cancer is being removed surgically, right. people remove some normal samples. So same, that will be yeah, same, same patient. biological patients right. in the origin of that. So this helps, this particular one will allow one to select based on what background you have. And the other one is man Whitney test, which actually people use where there is a no normal Gaussian. Say for example, a few times it is only standalone ones, right? right? Up and down, that's it. So you want to select this parameter for that. So based on right kind of design, one will select the different kind of statistics available and you perform the analysis data. So it's one need to look at their experimental design and then select the right statistical parameter for further analysis. Correct. So in this fashion, what the, it does is it tells you that, okay, I have got different kind of data sets which you want to select with. So I select them and I say group them according to like zero and ones, like all cases and all controls. Right. And then I perform the analysis. So let's quickly do that. This data is based on something like different kind of components, functions. So I want to understand the differences between the different functions. Or I can quickly say, you can quickly create a data set. So I can create a data set, set which one you want to create with. So I said, okay, create a data set from all these. Different time points we can different. So bas basically I know that it is high glucose at the beginning. So I can group them all as very high. Right. Because this is a time point, although it is decreasing, more likely I'll select only once with only 90. Sure. And then compared with very low type, and I want to see how they are getting different. Overall changes. Overall changes is happening in the low and high level change. Add to quick list data, and it is available to me. And the name I give is high sugar. Yeah. So it is available for me now. And I can also create a one with low sugar. And I'm going to say, I'm going to compare these, these two. two groups. I can differentially color them right. and I can see how the things are happening. Hit OK and you are ready with the different things. Other important thing is for the multiple testing corrections, it also gives an opportunity of correcting for the different multiple correction type. Say for example, Bonferroni, which is being used, 
Hodgeberg, Benjamin Hodgeberg. So they are uh, like different ways of correcting for the multiple test corrections. So you can apply different ones and look more preferably is Bonferroni which is more stringent type. Hodgeberg and Benjamin is little lenient on the multiple correction type. So you select them and see still there is a huge number of things which is getting uh, significant p-value changes. So these genes become really important for me. I can say I can create the image, store them and look back what these genes are, what those functions are. So in this fashion one can visualize, look at the differential gene with different kind of statistics, with different kind of multiple corrections and look at the data app. So in this fashion acuity helps in understanding the data analysis. Okay, it was very nice to see that there are so many parameters and uh, options we have here for um, QCing the data and analyzing it further for obtaining some meaningful information. Uh, I guess there is no end to uh, doing all of this analysis uh, till one really feels confident about that whole process has performed well. So I think I will finish here. Uh, so thank you for giving a very useful demonstration on the software and at least giving a glimpse of the entire workflow, how different type of processes are involved. Uh, I'm sure there is a lot more can be explained and a lot more can be done here. But just due to the overall time and uh, uh, this lecture, I think we should uh, finish here. Uh, at least students have got the glimpse of the overall process involved in the analysis and how one can look at a stringent way, different type of statistical test one need to perform and then different type of filtering can be done to obtain a different type of fold change and different ratios one need to obtain. And further one need to look at the trends for each of those and which can be color coded and presented in different ways. So thank you very much Pankaj for being here and giving a very useful demonstration on equity software for micro data analysis. Thank you. Thank you Dr. Srivastava. Thank you. Pleasure. It was very informative to discuss various parameters and options which have been placed for QCing the data and analyzing it further for obtaining some meaningful information. There is lot more that can be performed here and there is possibly no end to doing the data analysis till one really feels confident about the whole process has been performed well. But due to the time constraint, it might be right to conclude this lecture here. I hope you have got the glimpse of the process involved in data analysis and how one can look into uh, the data in much more stringent manner, perform various types of filtering to generate appropriate thresholds. One needs to further look into the trend of each of these features which can be color coded and presented in a different manner. Data analysis not only requires a good software platform, but also requires good programming and statistical skills. Experimental design is of paramount importance in these microarray based experiments. It is important to note that the software tool can help in analysis, but it is also important to have a good understanding of both the biology as well as analytical techniques involved in performing these experiments. Rather than completely relying on one software, we should also think about the biological context look at the control and then after careful biological as well as analytical analysis, you can obtain some meaningful information from these data sets. So, micro experiments generate high throughput data in a short time, but it becomes very challenging to analyze such data set, especially when you have to compare various slides from different experiments. You have to normalize them equally, so that you can compare all the slides on same platform. Thus, careful image processing and data analysis becomes crucial in microarray based experiments, which has been covered in detail now. Thank you.